Hi guys, common prosperity is a very hot topic in China recently. That China is a very different country now from back in the 50s. The government has even proposed the third distribution. Down to three key points. Um, the first being a state support and incentives. The second being around sort of an ingrained culture of this more structured strategic philanthropy. And the third really being about the infrastructure behind the land. Today, we invite two experts to discuss these topics. The first question is, the third distribution is a hot topic. Could you please explain to the audience what's the third distribution? What kind of people will participate in the distribution? So, the goal of um, Common Prosperity is based on an income distribution system by building basic institutional arrangements for the coordination of primary distribution, redistribution, and the third distribution. And the third distribution is about the philanthropy um, endeavors by the wealthiest to give back to society, such as through charitable donations and corporate giving. So now in terms of who will participate, that will remain very much to be seen. What we do know is that China is a very different country now from back in the 50s and there is much more wealth available. Decades of um, economic growth have um, delivered tremendous wealth, creating a middle class of 340 million people, earning between 15,000 and 75,000 per year, according to a report by HSBC. And with over 1,058 billion heirs, according to the 2021 Huren uh, Global Rich List, China now has more ultra-wealthy than any other country in the world, even in the US. Yes. So, could you please elaborate on how Western developed markets arrange the third distribution? In terms of third distribution, what are the similarities and the differences between China and those developed markets? Well, naturally it's different uh, country to country. You know, the motivators, the drivers are, are different in each country. But generally, I'd say it comes down to three key points. Um, the first being a state support and incentives. The second being around sort of an ingrained culture of this more structured strategic philanthropy. And the third really being about the infrastructure behind philanthropy. If we look at, say, the U.S., last year over $470 billion U.S. dollars was given away in, the, in, in, in America. There's no real global statistics, but that probably equates to around a quarter or a third of world giving. So, so that's a big chunk. Why is that? Let's look at it from those three points. So from state support and incentives, in the US, there are a variety of different ways that you can get tax relief with your charitable giving. But the second point around culture, you know, the US is the archetypal capitalist society, you know, the American dream, where if you work hard, you could be anything you want to be, but don't ask the state for any support. That's very different to here in Europe uh, or in China, where the state does play a role in things like education, healthcare, poverty relief. Final point around infrastructure, the non-for-profit world, charities, account for 9% of the US workforce. So it's, it's massive, it's an industry unto itself. That means it's also very heavily regulated and, and also very transparent. They, they have to publish their accounts, their income, their expenditure, the governance system behind it. So how is it different to China? Well, it, it's arguably a younger market when it comes to this more structured strategic philanthropy. But what I find really interesting, actually, is whenever I speak to Chinese clients, a Chinese philanthropists, there's a real desire to, to learn from their peers around the world. Not to copy at all, but to, to learn from and understand, which I think is, is very clever to do that, and then to relate it into their own context and what works for them in their own societies. As we know, the charitable undertakings are crucial for boosting the third distribution. Based on your research and observation, compared with global major economies, where does China stand on the charitable undertakings? How can we encourage and promote the development of China's philanthropy? Now, charity in China is arguably as old as um, the land itself. And in fact, it reflects Ren and Yi and the fundamental moral values and Confucianism, with Ren referring to benevolence and Yi referring to righteousness. So giving is to act for the sake of others for whom the benevolent heart has compassion. So when we talk about philanthropy, we want to be clear that we're talking about the modern form of structured and strategic forms of giving, which is a more recent phenomenon. 
So China has actually experienced extraordinary economic development since the introduction of market reforms in 1978. While such rapid development has enabled significant social progress for a large part of its people, it has also resulted in remarkable accumulation of private wealth. And with private wealth comes more disposable income, which also in turn leads to greater amounts for philanthropy. Since then, philanthropy in China has actually grown year on year, and arguably very, uh, took off um, following the devastating 2008 Sichuan uh, earthquake. And also, it's grown from about six billion in 2009 to about 25 billion in 2020. And according to a Bloomberg study, charitable giving from the wealthiest segment of Chinese society is actually 20 percent higher than the total national giving in 2020. And in fact, this year is going to look to be another record year in philanthropic giving in China. We have noticed that some Chinese enterprises have participated in the initiative of China's Common Prosperity Push, like Tencent and Ali. Both announced that they will earmark RMB 100 billion for common prosperity. In your opinion, how should we use the money and make it more efficient? What do the foreign enterprises or wealthy people do? When it comes to corporate philanthropy, it's quite different. You know, it, it, where it works well, corporate philanthropy focuses on, a, you know, a, a perhaps a thematic cause that is closely related to the core purpose of the business, or it's related to the core geography of where that business operates. If Germany is you know, well known for its multi-generational, for its host of, of multi-generational family-owned businesses that are spread right across the country. And you know, they're in small towns and villages where they employ pretty much everything. They focus their philanthropy very closely on those communities. As similar to, you know, in Korea, uh, Hyundai in, in, in Korea, they focus quite a lot in Ulsan, where their big, the big uh, company, where their big factory is, or, or Honda and Suzuki and Hamamatsu in Japan. Again, these are geographic focus of their, of their activities rather than thematic. When it comes to philanthropy, it shouldn't be so different. And you would seek instead a philanthropic consultant to help you, to advise you, to guide you, to make the right decisions from the outset. So that capital has the biggest return, the biggest social or environmental return. Okay, thanks for the interview. And in the future, I hope you guys are going to get a chance to China and to see the achievements of the China's Common Prosperity Push. So thanks for watching, bye bye.